So now we're starting on Unit 1 for our first topic, and this is specifically about, well, looking at patterns and finding rules to describe what the pattern is doing. So often these problems start with what looks like a physical pattern, something like building these patterns, these designs, if you will, out of, say, matchsticks. So you can imagine each of these blue lines being a little individual matchstick. Here's the first pattern. The second pattern it appears like another I don't know if you want to call those chairs, has been added on to the end. And the third pattern, we see another one added on to the end. So in each case, we see something new. Oops, it's not that one. But we see these new guys get added on. And on the third pattern, those are the new ones that got added on. So for the fourth pattern, if we want to take a guess at what that might look like, we would expect it would be the third pattern. And then we would add on another chair. So another one, two, three, four matchsticks. So you'll notice, again, this is the part that's new for the fourth pattern. So what we're going to be asked to do is find the rule that represents the following pattern of matchsticks. So, for instance, how can we describe in terms of algebra or mathematics how many matchsticks are needed for each of these patterns that are drawn, the first, the second, the third, fourth, the fifth, the tenth, etc. So our very first step here is to make a table. And I'm going to remind you here that we want to put in the pattern number, which we're going to call in for number, in the first column, and then we'll put in S for the number of matchsticks. So we'll say pattern, and call that letter in. And here we're going to say the number of matchsticks. And we're going to call that one S. And we're going to use these in and s to just help us come up with the rule, and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what it means to have a letter instead of a number written down. But the first thing that we can do is actually fill in the table. So that's going to be the first thing. So for the first pattern, pattern number one, how many matchsticks did we need? One, two, three, four, five of them. I sometimes cross them off as I count, just to make sure that I haven't missed any. For the second pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. For the third pattern, well, can you take a guess? Do you see kind of what's going on here? This bit here is the second pattern. That was 9 sticks. So maybe we can just count off the new ones. 10, 11, 12, 13. And for the fourth one, again, this here would have been the third pattern at 13, so let's count up the new ones to add on to that, 14, 15, 16, 17. And of course, if you wanted to do, you could come count them all, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, if you wanted to. But many times you'll start to see the pattern form in here. So what I've highlighted here is the new matchsticks that were added on each time, and you'll notice for all three of these, all four of these patterns, really, the new matchsticks added on was how many each time? Well, it was four new, so plus four new matchsticks for each time. And if you come and look at this table as well, what do you notice here? Five plus four gets you nine. So five plus four will get you to nine. Nine plus four will get you to thirteen. And thirteen plus four we'll get you to 17. So using that as what we can see as a pattern, something that's repeating itself, what would you predict would be in the fifth pattern if we were to make it out of matchsticks? Again, you would take 17 and you'd add 4 onto that. So 17 plus 4 would get us 21. So again, plus 4. And we could continue on like that. We could build, you know, a hundred of these things and we could find that by just doing plus 4, plus 4, plus 4 every time. But Doing plus 4 a hundred times is not very efficient, so this is why we want to learn how to write the rule. So the second step here that we're going to look for is finding the multiplier. And really, that's what we've figured out already, is how much does it go up or down each time? Now you can have patterns where there's a negative number, it's decreasing each time, but in this case we'll notice between each pattern step, from the first to the second, it's plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. So this plus 4 becomes our multiplier, if you will. So, 
what we do for our basic rule is we'll start writing it out like this. We're going to say the number of matchsticks, which is S, is going to be equal to the multiplier, which we found so far to be 4, times the pattern number. And now we've got to figure out if there's anything else we need to add to that rule to make it work each time. So I might write this out um, just to the side so we can see um, see what's going on here. So we're going to say s is equal to 4 times n. And we need to see if there's anything out this else, this plus or minus term that we're looking for. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually check. I'm going to look at the very first one here. If I had one pattern only built, do I need to add extra matchsticks or do what I need to take some away to get my numbers to work out right? So if I have one pattern, I'm supposed to have five matchsticks. So let's check how that works here. Let's actually plug it in. So for one pattern, I'm supposed to have five matchsticks. And what I have right here so far is that I've got four times one. And four times one gets you what? Four times one will get us four, but we're supposed to get to five. That's the number that we want. So we're trying to get into this column here. These are the numbers that we want. So starting off with that idea that we know it's times four each time, we're trying to get to five. So the first pattern is four times one, which gives us four, and we need to get to five. So how would you get from four to five? That's right, you would go plus one. So four times one plus one gets us five. And for the next one, just to check that, if we were going to build two patterns, again, starting with this idea of a multiplier that we've got, we know it's four times something. So it's going to be four times two, because we're building two of the patterns. And we have to see if we have to add something to that. So we want it to be nine. We know that we want it to be nine. So four times two gives us eight. Well, how do we get from 8 to 9? Again, here you have to plus 1. And how about for the third one? If we're going to build the third pattern, we need to get to 13. So 4 times 3 gets us 12. And how do we get to 13? Plus 1. So this is what's going to be called our plus or minus term, is this plus 1. It's the same thing over and over and over again. So each time to get to the correct number, we need to plus 1. And if you want to think about this as what we call our multiplier, that's how much it went up and down by each time. So we're going to times by the pattern number. That's how we call it the multiplier, because it's timesing. So that's the 4, the times 4 in the formula. So 4 times the pattern number. And the last thing that we can add on there is that plus or minus term, which is, in this case, the plus 1. So this becomes our generic rule for finding patterns. So I would write as an answer for this if I wanted to get the rule. I would literally say that is my answer. S is equal to 4 times n plus 1. And just as an aside, we can also write the rule without the time sign. That's a little trick that we'll learn and that we might already know, that 4 n plus 1 has a little invisible time sign in there that we don't bother writing. So we can just write the rule out as 4n plus 1. And that's the rule for us. So you can see I've written it out here as a generic. The s in this case, the number of sticks, times the multiplier, and then plus your plus or minus term, in this case a plus 1. So that rule, how that works now, is it'll describe for us if we ever want to know how many patterns are actually going to be in there? Or sorry, how many matchsticks we would need for any pattern. So it gives us a relationship between the number of sticks needed for any number of patterns that we build. So just to, to go through that one more time. First step that we did was make a table. With the pattern number first and the number of matchsticks second. We've got the first pattern with five sticks. You count them up. Second pattern, nine. Third pattern, 13. Fourth pattern, 17. Fifth pattern, 21. And we notice that each time our pattern has to increase by plus four because each time we're adding four new matchsticks onto the pattern. 
So that plus 4 that we notice that it's going up by each time becomes what we call our multiplier. So we can write s is equal to 4 times something, and then we have to check to see. Do we need it to be plus 1, minus 1, minus 3? How do we get to the right numbers each time? Because our pattern goes 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. And if we start with 4, we would go 4, 8, 12, and we don't need that. We need to get one more than that, and that's literally the plus 1. And another way to think about noticing where that plus 1 comes from, this plus 1, if you have a visual pattern to look at, you could also come in here and look, what's the one thing that does not repeat each time you draw this pattern? You'll notice it was this very first bit here. All of these have four matchsticks added on, but this one here was kind of the thing that started off in the first pattern that we don't actually draw in any of the other patterns because it's already going to be in there. So the first pattern, we needed one more matchstick to make it, and the rest of them, each time we go up, we only add in the four. So since the first pattern needed five instead of four, that's where that plus one comes from. That gets us from four plus that extra little matchstick. So each time that little matchstick is still in there, there's a little extra matchstick. There it is again, and there it is again. So it's, if you look at it visually, the part of the pattern that was never repeated, that was just at the start and stayed there the whole way through, versus the ones that we've highlighted in yellow, those are the ones that get added on each time, plus four every time. So again, the basics for your rule can be s is equal to 4n plus 1. Sometimes we'll use different letters like m or p or t or n. It just depends on the specific problem. But another thing that I want you to notice here is that the s is in the second column, and it's the bit that gets written first. The n is in the first column, and it's the bit that gets written second. So it's kind of like a swap over between the two.